Hey everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today we are going to do Photo Basics Part 2. So first things first, if you haven't watched Part 1, check that out there up in the corner. I'll also put a link down in the description. Make sure that you've watched Part 1 because it's a prerequisite for this video. What's the topic of this video? Well, this video is gonna be all about your camera's meter, your light meter that is built into your camera. And light meters are amazing things, and they are even more amazing if you fully understand them, and more than understand how they work, understand how they don't work. Because meters are also kinda silly in the world of photography just because they have to be. So, first of all, what is a meter? Very simply put, a meter is a light sensor. It senses how much or how little light there is in a scene. How we interact with a meter as a photographer depends on what mode we're shooting our camera in. So if I was shooting my camera in one of the automatic modes, and automatic modes means program, aperture priority, or shutter priority, my meter is actually going to have control over my camera it's going to read the light in the scene and it's going to automatically adjust the settings in my camera to do its best job that it can to give me a properly exposed photograph. In some modes, that means the meter is gonna adjust the aperture, in some modes it'll adjust the shutter speed, and in some modes it will adjust everything, okay? So the meter is going to do that. Now in manual mode, the meter is going to help us make decisions on what settings we should use. The meter has no actual control over our settings in manual mode. And that's why when you're learning, I recommend learning on manual mode. And again, like I said in the last video, if you have some sort of shoot that is required of you to perform, required of you to produce good results, go back to what you're familiar with and don't shoot manual for those things unless you're very familiar with manual mode. You don't want to like go all in on manual and then go shoot a wedding or something and and you know the bride really don't shoot a wedding if you're watching this video that's a really bad idea you don't want to like go on manual mode and go shoot senior portraits of one of your friends uh, and be learning manual as you're doing that please don't shoot a wedding if you're watching this video like I know some of you have and it's good for you for watching this video but know this stuff before you take money to shoot someone's special day like that's pretty awesome okay Side note aside, little rant, let's get more into it. Okay, so now that we know that the meter reads light in the scene, let's talk a little bit more about how it works because it's really important to know what the meter's doing on the inside in order to understand how we can be better than the meter. So the first thing we need to understand about the meter is that the meter sees the world in black and white. It can see no colors whatsoever. Now, some camera companies have started to design color meters that can start to see colors, but it's a very niche thing that's not very common. So these days we can kind of assume that the meter sees only shades of gray. Now, that's a really hard thing for us to envision as humans, but we really have to try to do a good job of that. An idea and kind of a way to wrap your brain around this is if you think about bright green grass, like the greenest grass you've seen in a beautiful, like well-kept lawn, that to your meter is exactly the same as a brightly lit fire engine red fire engine, like a, a freshly wash, washed red fire truck. Those two things to our eyes look completely different. But if you were to turn on black and white vision, they would look exactly the same. Fire engine red and green grass green are identical to your meter, which is really important to start understanding that you're looking at tones and not colors. And that's something that I kind of like to draw a distinction of uh, quite often with my students is the difference between tonalities and colors. Colors are so much of what we interact with in this world being blues and purples and greens and all these different colors, but tones are levels of brightness. A dark tone is something like a black or a dark gray, and a light tone is something like a white or a near white. Okay, so now that we know the meter only sees in shades of gray, it only sees in black and white, what does the meter think is correct? And this is where we start to get weird things, right? We're talking about how the meter is going to give us indications of whether we have a good exposure or a bad exposure or in, in automatic mode it's actually going to take control and, and try to do that for us but what is it trying to do what i mean is that if if you point your meter at something very very dark what the meter is going to try to do is it's going to try to lighten that and if you point the meter at something very very bright it's going to try to darken that so if that's in your brain the meter is essentially trying to make everything in the world a middle gray, a gray that's halfway between white 
and black. And you've probably heard the term middle gray thrown around as photographers. You might have heard it as 18% gray or middle gray or uh, the gray that your meter uses or the gray that's halfway between. It's not actually 50% gray. People always think like, why are you calling it 18% gray? Well, if you have a surface that's 18% reflective, it's actually halfway between white and black. Kind of interesting, a 50% reflective surface is almost pure white. So kind of an interesting tidbit there, but, but you guys will see that middle gray, 18% gray, there's a lot of different words for it, but it all basically means a gray that's exactly halfway between white and black. And what your meter tries to do is it tries to take anything you point at in the world, again, it can't see color, and it tries to make that thing be 18% gray. Let me give you guys a quick example. All right, so you're out shooting, right? And let's say that you are photographing a old black uh, steam locomotive, like a, a steam engine on a train, right? Think old train, big old steam. It's got those like sweet wheels. It's a big black steam engine, okay? Well, that steam engine is supposed to be black, right? It's a black steam engine. But let's say you point your meter at it, and let's say you're shooting on an automatic mode like aperture priority or shutter priority, and you point your meter at that train so that the meter is only seeing that train. What's it gonna do? Well, the meter is gonna see that train and it's gonna say, ooh, that's a dark train. And it's going to intentionally brighten up that train until the train is what? 18% gray or middle gray. And when you take that picture, guess what you just did to your image? You took an overexposed or a too bright of a photograph. That's a problem. You're trusting your meter and your meter is failing you. Let me give you another example. Let's say that you're outside and you are photographing a white church. Let's say there's a perfect white church sitting there with bright blue sky behind it, beautiful picturesque scene out in the middle of, you know, who knows where you've got this white church. Well, if you point your meter at that white church and you're shooting in an automatic mode like aperture priority or shutter priority and you trust what the camera says and you take a picture, the camera and the meter is gonna see that church and it's going to try to darken it down to 18% gray because it sees all that white and it thinks, oh, that's too bright, I gotta make it 18%. You take the picture and manual, and, and your camera just told you to take an image that's too dark. So your meter is always trying to make things be halfway between white and black, which most of the time works fine. I just provided two examples where it obviously failed horribly. But in most cases, that actually works pretty good. If you guys think about the world as you're interacting with it, most stuff isn't pure white or pure black. It's somewhere in between. And that is why your camera is calibrated to try to make those things come out correctly. Let me give you a third correctly working example. It just so happens that green grass is about, if you were to see it in black and white, it's about right at middle gray. It's about 18% gray or middle gray, right? So. If you were shooting a photograph of a beautiful, uh, say you had like a cute dog sitting in this giant field of bright green lawn grass, if you were on an app automatic mode on your camera and you pointed your meter at some of that grass, let's say the dog was out of the scene and you were just pointing your meter at the grass and you trusted what aperture priority or shutter priority told you and you took a picture of the dog in that green grass, it would come out perfect because the meter would see that green grass and it would say, hey, Let's put that green grass right at 18% gray where green grass is supposed to be. And when you take that photograph, boom, you've got a perfect exposure. So how would I summarize this little bit? Well, what I would say is this, most of the time, the meter reading things and trying to make them middle gray is actually a really good thing. Imagine if your meter was calibrated to make everything black. It would be a really hard world to get properly exposed images. If your meter was exposed to make everything white, everything would come out too bright. So they split the difference and they put it right in the middle. And for most cases, that works really, really well. Okay, now there's two more things that I wanna talk about in this video, and they're both equally important with this whole situation. The first one is how you interact with your meter when you're on manual mode, because all of my previous examples have been in an automatic mode, and that's great, but in automatic mode, 
it takes control. Um, you're not in control of anything. So how do we interact with it in automatic and manual mode, excuse me? Well, manual mode, you're gonna see when you're looking through the viewfinder. And again, I said this in the last video, I think it's so important. Don't operate your camera like this where you're looking at the screen. Operate your camera looking through the viewfinder. If you have a mirrorless camera, a DSLR, whatever it is, always use the viewfinder because it gives you all the useful information you need and you don't actually need the touch screen on the back or any of that stuff. Like for years, photographers didn't have touch screens and they were able to do fine. So it's really good to get used to using the eyepiece. It's just gonna do a better thing. If you have a mirrorless camera without an eyepiece, obviously you can't, but if you have an eyepiece, utilize your eyepiece. Okay, so on manual, when you look through your viewfinder or you look at the screen on the back, you are going to see a little meter. I'll pop one up right down here on the bottom of the screen. A little meter, it looks like a bar with some dashed lines, right? And when you push in your shutter button halfway, there's a half push and there's a full push, full push takes a picture. If you push in your shutter button halfway, a second little line, I'll throw one down there right now, is gonna pop up somewhere on that scale. And what that is showing you is that little line that pops up on that scale is indicating what the meter thinks your exposure will be if you were to take a picture with the current settings. So. If that needle is too far over to the right hand side, the camera is indicating you to you that this image is going to be too bright, right? If the needle's over here, it's saying, hey, that's the brightness zone, it's gonna to be too bright. If the needle's closer to the left hand side, it's indicating that the camera and the meter think that it's going to be too dark. So the idea is in manual that you want to center out that meter and get that line right in the middle. And the idea is that if you take the picture with that, that means that the meter is taking the light in the scene and it's making it 18% gray. And in most situations, you should get a properly exposed picture. So that's how we interact with it in manual mode. And again, go back and watch the previous video to learn how we work with ISO, aperture, and shutter speed to get that needle to be where it needs to be in order to get a properly exposed photograph. Now I wanna just say a quick little pro tip, and this is kind of one of those things that's a little food for thought for those of you who, who kind of understand a lot of this already. And that is, think back to those two examples I talked about of the white church and of the uh, black steam locomotive, right? If you think about those, um, when you think about that, your meter is, is basically steering you wrong, which means if you were in manual and you saw that needle and it pointed somewhere and you centered it out, you would actually not want to center the meter in those situations. You would want to put the meter intentionally somewhere else in order to get a properly exposed photo. That's all I'm going to give on that. We'll talk about that in a later video, but I just wanted to give some food for thought that if you know your meter is going to be wrong and you're shooting manual, you can just override what your meter says and do something different, which is kind of nice. Okay. That takes care of the first thing that I wanted to talk about with uh, the, the first of the last things I wanted to talk about with metering. Let's get into the second thing, and this will be the last thing that we talk about in this video. We also have control over how our meter reads light in the scene. And the way that I wanna best kind of give that as an example is with this video framing that I have going on right here, okay? There are really three or four, but I'm gonna talk about two main metering modes that are important to know about. And these are called metering modes. So you can kind of look that up in your manual if you are curious on where this is on your specific camera, but a metering mode is important. And the two metering modes I wanna talk about today, the first is what's called spot metering, and the second is what is called evaluative on Canon, matrix on Nikon, or zone on every other Canon camera brand. So spot metering, everyone calls it spot metering, that's mode number one, and mode number two, two is evaluative on Canon, matrix on Nikon, or zone metering on most every other camera brand manufacturer. Let's start with spot. Spot metering means that when you look through the viewfinder, you need to envision a tiny little circle in the center of your view through your camera. So like I'm looking through my camera right now, you guys are right there, and I see a, you know, a nice wide field of view around everything and I'm envisioning a tiny little circle right in the middle of what I see through the viewfinder. If I put my camera on spot metering, and I'll pop the icon for spot metering right up there, up there, so you guys can see what it looks like. All of your cameras have a spot setting, unless it's a really cheap camera, and then you'll look up something called partial. If you don't see spot in your camera manual, look for partial metering. If you have spot, use it, but if you don't have it, use partial. When you set your camera to spot, 
and you look through the viewfinder, the camera's meter is only reading light from that tiny little circle. What that means is you can very precisely point your meter at some part of your scene, take a meter reading, and it will not care about any of the light elsewhere in the scene. Let me give you guys a quick example. Let's say that you are doing a photograph again of a dog against green grass. And let's say that it's a pretty close up shot of the dog. So most of the, do most of the image is the dog and there's a little bit of bright green grass around the outside of the dog. Well, if you were on not spot metering, it would look at the dog, it would look at the grass, it would look at everything. But what we could do is set our camera to spot metering and point our meter on manual mode down to the grass so that that little center circle is only over nice green grass. We could center out our meter, you know, use aperture, shutter speed, and ISO to center out our meter. And then we could recompose the shot. And as long as we don't re-expose anything and adjust any of those three exposure settings, we can take a picture and the dog because it's in the same light as the grass, should also be properly exposed. Kind of an interesting thing, right? You can point at one part of the scene or another. Think about it, if it was a black dog and you had green grass, you wouldn't want to point your spot at the black dog because what would the spot meter try to do to the dog? Brighten it up to 18% gray. But if we point it at the, at the green grass and we center out our meter there, green grass is supposed to be 18% gray or halfway between white and black. So it would be a properly exposed photo. So spot metering gives you the most control because you can entirely control where the camera is reading light from in the scene. The second mode is evaluative on Canon, Matrix on Nikon, or Zone on every other camera brand. And every camera is gonna have this mode, whether it's really cheap or whether it's super professional, it doesn't really matter. I'll throw the little icon for it up there so you can see what that little thing looks like. This is the icon you are looking for. Most cameras use a very similar icon, but you can see it up there. It, evaluative or matrix or zone, I'll just call it zone metering from now on, it looks at the whole scene. So what I mean by that is if I look through my viewfinder at you guys, it's looking at the dark areas, the light areas, it's looking at all of the scene that I see through this camera right now. It's not looking at just one part or another. And that is a very great mode to set your camera to for just your average walking around shots. If you don't wanna think about metering and you want it to kind of average things out, that's the, the mode to go with. It looks at the whole scene and it averages out everything together when it's taking your meter reading. And think about why that's so good. Most of the time when you're taking a picture, you've got some shadows, some highlights, some dark stuff, some stuff in the middle, some light stuff, some, you know, everything, red, green, blue, purple. Your meter can't see color, but it's all there. You've got all these different colors and, and tones and the meter on zone mode or evaluative or matrix mode averages out all of that. And usually if you average out everything in your scene, it comes out somewhere close to middle gray. And so your meter being on that mode is usually very effective at coming up with a good meter reading. When will it fail? Well, if you were taking a photo of a black locomotive, a steam locomotive, a, a, an old train, right? That train is pure black. And if your whole scene is full of pure black, it's going to average out the pure black and it's going to try to make it gray and it's going to fail. Okay. So that's kind of what we want to keep in mind with metering. Here's my final thoughts is what I would give. When you are practicing and learning about this, I think the best way to see whether you're winning or failing at learning this, and there's no failing, there's just struggling until you get it down. I would say, I would recommend you set your camera to spot metering and manual mode. Manual with spot go really, really well together because it gives you as the photographer complete control over both where you read the light and what decision you make based on what your meter tells you. If you're walking around and you're just trying to look for like brainless photos, say you're on a vacation to like Italy and you want the perfect shot, uh, but you don't want to have to think too much about it. Then I would recommend aperture priority or shutter priority with a valuative matrix or zone metering where it averages the whole scene to come up with the kind of close, well, good exposure. Okay. Hopefully that makes some sense. That is how metering works in our cameras, how we can do a really good job at getting good, properly exposed images in a variety of situations. I hope you guys like this video. We put a lot of time into these basics videos. If you did, I would love you guys to hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button two times so that it undoes what you did. If you guys have a question, leave it in the comment section down below. Hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos and hit that bell icon to be notified when we post new content. Lastly, 
In our next video, not next video, but next video in this series, we are gonna talk about outsmarting your meter, how to be smarter than your camera, which is getting into like pro status territory people. You can probably expect that sometime in July. Um, again, get subscribed so you don't miss that part. And we will catch you guys in our next video next week. I don't know what it's gonna be, but we'll find out. Thanks guys.